welcome to another edition of Bourbon and Bullets. Well, you've probably heard of Jessica Yanov, and despite that name, yes, it's a guy. It's a guy who walks around in a muumuu and asks women, goes to various salons and asks women to, the, sorry, there's no better way to put it, to wax his balls. And then when they say that they only do women, he screams, I am a woman, and he goes, he makes a beeline to the human rights tribunal and uh, files a lawsuit. He's done this 16 times now. He um, he got Jess, uh, sorry, he got uh, Lindsay Shepard kicked off Twitter for a couple of weeks because um, after he made some very nasty comments, which I won't repeat here, she um, she called him a fat, ugly man, uh, which basically is. And uh, so that was, uh, she was in the wrong. She was in the wrong. Um, yeah, and as Rex Murphy, uh, who writes for the National Post, they keep him on staff at the National Post so they can still pretend they're a uh, right-leaning newspaper, which they're not. They're, they've become a far-left newspaper with, they happen to have Rex, the great Rex Murphy, I should say. And he quite rightly posits that, yeah, uh, Canada is clown world. Yeah, the rest of the world's going to clown world. But Canada, under Justin Trudeau, is leading the charge and we have just gone full retard. You never go full retard. Yeah, the, we're now into full retard. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. So this fat, ugly man with a five o'clock shadow who likes to call himself, call himself Jessica and demands uh, women, sometimes immigrant women who don't, you know, English is not their first language, and they're trying to run a small business, and in walks this creep and demands that they wax his balls, and they're like, yeah, no. And then, you know, they're overwhelmed by the system. The, the, the human rights tribunal system jumps into motion, and all they are is they're geared towards helping the oppressed. And, of course, this guy, he claims he's trans, so, yeah, he, he wins on the oppression points. And who cares if these people lose their job? Who cares if these people have families to support? Oh, the main thing is that this fat ugly guy, um, you know, got some justice because uh, they wouldn't wax his balls. Um, now, on top of all that, on top of all that making him such a charming, charming person, he's also a sexual predator. He loves to go on Twitter and communicate with underage girls. He he always asks how old they are when he's when he's talking to them. He wants to know, make sure that they're you know they're under thirteen. He really likes them about ten to twelve. He likes to ask them about their. Um, I really don't like to. Go, he he likes to ask them about their their menstruation uh, and how they deal with it. And oh my god, yeah, this this guy's really, this guy really takes the cake. Um, this was one of the reasons. This is one of the contretemps that he got into with Lindsay Shepard. And uh, not only that, not only that, he has gotten the city of Langley to pay for him to have a, a pedo pool party. And what I mean by that is he's invited trans youth, uh, whatever, you know, male or female. I mean, I, I don't know. It's hard to define what any, what any of this is. But anyway, so he's invited trans youth 12 and up to a topless to pool party so semi -new. so presumably he's he's inviting preteen and young teenage girls to a pool party where they go topless and he frolics with them because we're all just girls we're all just girlfriends and the city of Langley's paying for that and there are no chaperones no adults no guardians are allowed because he's apparently in charge of running this thing and because uh, it's it's, uh, you know, we're all just girlfriends. We're, we're just all potty, body positivity. Um, and I really don't think that, uh, I really don't think that any, any semi-sane 14-year-old girl, 12 to 14-year-old girl, really wants to go topless with a 300-pound man at a pool. Um, somehow I can't see. So I, I, I don't know how that's going to work out. But yeah, the the city of Langley's paying for that. If you live in if you live in the city of Langley, British Columbia, that's where your tax dollars are going to. So if they raise your property taxes, um, I, I would be up in arms over that. 
Okay, so the uh, so Dan Dix at Press for Truth, and I'll pu I'll put the whole I'll put the whole video in the in the description. He did an entire video on this, um, but I'm just gonna play a clip of his video when he he uh, cornered uh, Jessica. She was on her way to the Human Rights Tribunal, and he just asked for an interview, and she flipped out and started calling the police just for him, just for uh, for Dan Dix. Asking for an interview here, I'll, so I'll, I'll play with that. Able to get a quick little interview with uh, where you. Where from? Uh, well, I'm from Toronto, but Vancouver now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to. What, what publication? A press for truth. News press now. for oh, truth. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? Why are you uh, skating the place so quickly? <laughs> hey, why? Why do you? Uh, why do you guys want to have a pool party with kids? That's a pedophilia. Sir, so are you familiar with press for truth? Why do, you, why do you want to have a pool party with kids? Okay, open the door. She's calling 9 You don't need to panic. I mean, we, we just want to have a conversation. Why do you want to have pool parties with Arra kids? Just a rational... Open the door! Open the door! What are you so worried about, sir? We just want to have a ra rational conversation. Uh, hello, I need these places right now. Why do you want to have pool parties with kids? Yeah, I do. 605, 605, Robson. Yeah. Yes. Hi there, can you please assist in that 605 yeah. Alpson, please? Hmm. Please call the police. Stop the cops for nothing. Uh, protesters, please. Protesters? Protesters. Okay, you can leave. Are you You're not welcome here. Oh, sorry? Get, get out. This is a secure this area. Get out. Secure. Get out. This is a public space. No, it's not. Get out. Yeah, it is. Get out or I will pepper spray you. Excuse get me? Out. No, no, don't, don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. Go out. No. Hey, hey, hey. Get, get out. out. Don't touch you me. You go out. 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 out you go. Yeah, so apparently that was that was uh, Jessica Yanov's mom assaulting Dan Dix there at the end of the clip. And as you saw, the the, the guy walks around a moo moo. He needs a mobility scooter to get around. Um, and this is a guy who wants to hang out with, with uh, preteen and young teenage girls um, half naked in a pool. And pa apparently parents are, are going to let that happen. Uh, do we live in a sick, messed up world? I don't, well, I don't know what else I can say about that. Um, now, of course, you saw how he reacted to independent media. He didn't like, didn't like Dan Dix. As soon as Dan Dix said, press for truth. Now, Dan Dix is hardly, you know, some rabbit right winger. He's very, very much a libertarian. Um, and he does some very good reporting, I must say. Um, so, but, uh, you know, this, this Yanov guy, he, he just heard that and he, he ran for the hills and he immediately called the police. So he knows that he's going to get a pass in the establishment media, in the legacy media. Now, just as an example of that, I'm going to play you another clip. I'm going to play a clip from the from Jesse Brown's Canada Land. Now, Jesse Brown at Can the Canada Land podcast, he tries to present himself as independent media, but he he gets funding from the federal government to do this podcast. He absolutely hates independent media, even though he ostensibly pretends to be that. He works very closely with the CBC. Um, the, I had a video um, earlier this year where I showed uh, someone showed up. He was not working for Rebel Media, but he, he showed up at a media panel talking about hate speech and asked Jesse Brown about Rebel Media. And he immediately attacked this guy um, saying, you know, are you from Rebel Media? What are you doing? Why are you asking those questions? The guy just wants to know, why isn't Rebel Media included in a panel? On media, why do you consider them hate speech? Do they just bring a different point of view? You know, you know all the, the, the usual stuff. Anyway, so let's listen to the great Jesse Brown. Um, yes, I'm being entirely facetious. Uh, talk about the Jessica Yanov. Case. This imaginary trans boogeyman now seems to exist at least to the extreme conservative media around the world who have been putting this person on their airwaves and writing copiously about this person. This person lives in British Columbia. Her name is Jessica Yaniv. Have you been reading about Jessica Yaniv? I know more about this now than I would ever have wanted to. You made me read up on this, Jesse. I'm sorry, because it is, it's a silly and absurd and, and gross and kind of unpleasant story. So that's the execrable Jesse Brown talking about how horrible it is that, we, that we're criticizing Jessica Yaniv. I mean, why shouldn't a 300-pound man who wants to pretend to be a woman get his balls waxed and hang out 
uh, half naked with preteen girls. I mean, how horrible that we should should criticize them. Um, now, for another take on this, yeah, I'm going to play another. This is kind of a clip heavy uh, clip heavy video I'm doing because I'm going to play another clip from from Blair White. Now, Blair White, of course, many of you, well, maybe maybe you don't know, she's a trans woman. She was born male, um, but as you'll see, she looks very much like a woman. I mean, you would you would not think that this is a biological man. She's engaged to a man. Um, ben Shapiro, she was on Ben Shapiro's show, and Ben Shapiro refuses to recognize her as anything but a biological man. But, I, you know, the difference is that even though I know she is technically male, if, you know, as a man, we're very visual. So I look at her, and, you know, she has curves, she has long hair, she has big eyes, she's petite. Everything about me as a man says that that's a woman, and you react to her as a woman. You want to be protected of her. You you want to be polite. I mean, just how you would to any attractive young woman, you do. And, I mean, I guess some people say that's unfair. Well, you know, life's unfair. I mean, she, you know, it didn't come easy for her to become, you know, uh, to present as a woman. Um, and as she's actually said in previous videos, it, you know, it was even harder for her to come out as, as a conservative. So, you know, that tells you something. Um so, you know, unlike, you know, the Jessica, and, and A, she wants to live ostensibly as a heterosexual couple with her, with her fiancé. Unlike Jessica Yanov, who is a 300-pound man with the 5 o'clock shadow who wants to pretend to be a woman and hang out half-naked with preteen girls. All right, anyway, so... Um, I'm just here. I'm going to play uh, Blair White's clip. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a bit disturbing. We're dealing with some dark subject matter, but I do urge you to watch to the end of the video because I do feel as though this is an important thing to talk about. So you may have seen this face all over Twitter and social media in the past week. This is trans activist Jessica Yaniv. Now this person is the walking, talking, living and breathing embodiment of what people fear when it comes to trans people. And I so, I mean, her basic premise is that, you know, people like Ye Jessica Yaniv or Jonathan Yaniv, more like, that's his, that's his original masculine name, and let's face it, it's, he's a guy. Um, anyway, so Blair White's thesis is that, you know, this is what destroys it for, for trans, because they, we, you know, people that are all, I mean, yes, granted, there are real bigots that don't like trans people, you know, just for the fact that they're trans. There's people that don't like uh, even Blair White, you know, just because she's trans. Um, you know, as far as I'm, she didn't transition until she was an adult. She's, you know, it's her decision. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a free society. Um, be who, be who, what you want and what you like. Okay. The pro and she's never tried to say that, you know, oppression points and, oh, poor me, I'm oppressed. As, as I said, she's a very vocal, uh, right-leaning conservative. Uh, unlike Jessica Yanev, who wants the world to accept her as a woman, which they're just not. And she's going to sick the Human Rights Tribunal on you um, if you don't recognize this fat, ugly man as a woman. And alternatively, she's a he, sorry, he's a sexual predator of young girls. So, no, she, he, <laughs> I know, even I get messed up on these stupid pronouns, um, does not have the right to be what he wants because what he wants to be is a sexual predator. So now, all that said, I'm still not for deplatforming this Jessica Yana person. I mean, if he wants to go on Twitter, um and make disgusting comments. I mean, that's up to Twitter whether they want to keep them around. Uh, of course, you know, all of us have been banned on Twitter for much, much less, as has Lindsay Shepard. Um, if he, he wants to go out, if, if he, you know, he can put on a dress and call himself a woman and whatever, but he can't expect us to think of him as a woman. And he cannot go to waxing you know waxing salons where they say they only do women and ask women to to wax his balls they don't want to wax their balls that's not what they're in business for um they probably don't even like doing women half the time you know uh, let alone having this 300 pound uh guy waddle in 
and say wax my balls. All right. I can't believe how many times I've said that in one video. <laughs> anyway, um, somebody's going to take me saying that out of context and use that against me. I just, I just know it. But anyways, all right. So look, I mean, you can put on a, th you can put on a moo moo and walk in the pride parade and whatever. That's fantastic. But, and you know, great. But we cannot, do not go to the human rights tribunal and demand that, uh, you know, we think of you as a woman and blah, blah, and we use the right pronouns and all the rest of it. The sad part is that's exactly what he can do. That is actually the law in Canada, thanks to Justine Trudeau, who also just can never get enough of walking in pride parades. Now, um, Jessica Yanoff has also been helped in his quest for largesse from the Human Rights Tribunal for his, his so-called oppression from Mo Morgan or Morgan or Gare, Mor Mor Morgan Ogre, okay, whatever, just for simplicity's sake, um, a former NDP cabinet, uh, for <laughs> former NDP candidate uh, in the city of, city of Vancouver, and he um, also not much of a looker, but I'll, I'll, but not a sexual predator. So at least I'll I'll give him that. He is great buddies with Michelle Rempel, cons, uh, conservative from Alberta, and um, while not a sexual predator, certainly not, and certainly he's an adult and entitled to go out and say that he's a woman. Listen, more power to him. It's a free country. However, he doesn't want freedom for the rest of us. He wants to bring in the the Atlas of Hate for Canada. So, and of course, I would definitely be on it, and as would Dan Dix from Press for Truth, and as would many, many, uh, Rance Derrick, and, oh, I mean, just uh, Kelly Day. Okay, I could go on and on, all right? Basically, anybody uh, center-right is going to be on his, his Atlas of Hate. And the Canadian Conservative Party... Uh, yeah, they're fully on board with that. They think it's just great. You know what, guys, over there at the Conservative Party? You're never going to win those votes, okay? They hate you. Michelle Rample can go get her nails done with Morgane or Ogre, and they can be girlfriends together. They're still not going to win those votes. They're still going to go to the NDP and the Liberals, okay? Anyway. Back to uh, a former leftist who saw the light. Yes, I'm talking about Lindsay Shepard, who had to experience this so-called uh, uh, search for hate speech firsthand when she committed the crime of playing a uh, Jordan Peterson video for her class, which she was a teaching assistant for at the uh, at Wilfrid Laurier University. So she, uh, I'm just gonna yes, I'm gonna play one more clip. Last clip, I promise, and I'm just going to, um, l you can listen to her views on her little dust-up with uh, Jessica Yanoff, how it played out on Twitter, and more importantly, and more enlightening, how the legacy media, the mainstream media, the taxpayer-supported media handled it uh, afterwards. So here, take a listen. I want to talk now a bit about the Yaniv situation and how it's being covered in the mainstream media. A lot of us have been talking about Yaniv since last year, but the publication ban that was put in place by the BC Human Rights Tribunal was just lifted in mid-July. This is why finally there's a lot of media coverage about not only Yaniv's human rights tribunal cases, but who Yaniv is in general. Now, there are a couple of things about the media coverage that I want to point out. Firstly, when the Canadian media covered my Twitter ban, and if you're not familiar with why I was banned in the first place, um, I will link my video about that below in the description. But what I found really telling was that they would print that I called Yaniv an ugly fat man. They would have no problem repeating that. But they would not say that Yaniv said, I have a loose vagina and he has a tight pussy. And of course, we know that I was suspended for what I said, but Yanni was not suspended or punished in any way for what he said. So, I find it interesting that my remarks were, you know, people had no problem repeating them and saying what they are, but with Yaniv's remarks, they were so vulgar that no one even wanted to repeat them. No one even wanted to publish what they were. They would just say remarks about Lindsay Shepard's genitalia. 
at the time of my Twitter ban, I was invited on a radio show. I don't really want to say which one, but I was asked not to say Jessica Yaniv's name. I was asked not even to use the initials JY, um, but I was told, I was directed to, to refer to Yaniv as this individual. And this was after the publication ban was lifted. So we were allowed to say Jessica Yaniv's name or even just JY, but this radio show did not even want me saying JY. Um, and this is because they told me they don't want to get sued, right? Because everyone is so afraid that Yaniv, is, who's extremely litigious, is going to haul them into the Human Rights Tribunal or sue them. And so, you know, is this a reason why a lot of people uh, aren't covering this story? Is because they're so afraid of getting sued? That's pretty awful. And then also a radio show host told me that both my comments and Yaniv's comments were abusive, which I was a little bit taken aback by. But I said to this radio show host, I have zero tolerance for predators. I am not going to be nice to predators. I am not going to be polite to predators. Zero tolerance. End of story. Yeah, well, that pretty much says it for me. You're, you're a sexual predator, then, yeah, sorry. Exactly. Zero tolerance. You're preying on young girls? Yeah, no. You, you don't get to be oppressed and go run. Well, I mean, you do, but you shouldn't be allowed to say you're oppressed and go running to the Human Rights Tribunal you should, you know, you should be taken out back and castrated. Um, anyway, uh, I, I, I mean, there you have it. I mean, here is Lindsay Shepard, young, intelligent young woman who is being viciously attacked by this creep. And the media are still, are still covering for this guy. I mean, it's incredible. They're still saying that her comments are, the guy couldn't be any more disgusting. I don't even like to show or play his comments. The guy is so disgusting. And yet the media thinks that because he's trans, it automatically wins the oppression points and therefore everybody has to cover for him. And as I said, look, I am not saying he should not be free to be who he wants to be as long as he's not hurting anybody else. But he has very much crossed that line uh, multiple times. So we are no longer talking about individual liberty and free to be who you want to be we're talking about a sexual predator and even before we get to that point we're also talking about the Morgane ogres of the world who want to restrict even though I would grant her the individual liberty to be to be what he wants to be um, and put on a dress and say that he's a woman like I said as long as you're not hurting anybody more power to you go be what you will in this free, what well, should be a free and open country, but but alternatively, he wants to restrict my rights to have any opinion on it. He wants to say that I have to use prescribed pronouns, and you know, God forbid, I ever you know I ever refer to him as he, which I'm I'm yes, I'm very purposely doing because um, yeah, basically like Jordan Peterson, don't tell me what I can or cannot say. All right, um, I'm not telling you what you can or cannot say. So there you go, bud. Um, of course, unfortunately, the law is actually on his side because we live in one effed up country thanks to Justine Trudeau. Um, anyway, I think that's enough on these sad folks for one day. Uh, I've about covered it and other people have covered it. Uh, it's, it's been, they've been given more attention than they deserve. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's hard to ignore what is going on in our country and what it has come to. So, uh, with that, I will say adieu, and thanks as always for watching and listening, and until next time, this has been Bourbon and Bullets.